Hey guys, Into the Stars, and I'm going to share some more personal information with you that fits exactly into this journey that we've all been on. Now, of course, all of this has not made sense to me until now, until my life of self-discovery. At the age of 11, when I was in the fifth grade, my mother moved from Stockton, California to Lodi, California. It was 1984. I finished out the remainder of my schooling for the fifth grade at Washington Elementary School in Lodi, California. That was in 1984. Now we've talked a lot about 1984 being an important year, but it doesn't stop there, you guys. I started high school in 1988, and we've been talking a lot about the number 88. I attended Lodi High School, the Lodi Flames to be exact. Lodi spelled backwards is idle. Now the oldest recorded instance of a town called Lodi is in Italy, not too far from the Vatican. Lodi, Lombardy, Italy. Now I was shocked to see that the main church in Lodi, Italy, was designed in 1488, and that it exists in the Piazza della Vittoria. And I looked it up here, Google Earth, that is the plaza. Now exactly 0.23 miles from the very center of this square, where we saw the church, we have a monument called Belfagor at the top of a pyramid and all-seeing eye. And this is Belfagor in Lodi, Italy. And these symbols should look very familiar to you guys. But what I'm going to show you next is unbelievable. Now God uses our own personal journey in everything that happens in our life to guide us toward truth, to guide us towards understanding of this reality and our relationship with Him, and to understand evil, to understand good. And my personal journey has been exactly that. All of the pieces put in place for us to go on this journey together and understand exactly what we're dealing with. Now, we are going to zoom out and again, this is Lodi, Italy. And again, I grew up in Lodi, California. And the band Danzig is from Lodi. New Jersey and there is your pyramid with all-seeing eye atop it with Belfagor as the pinnacle of this pyramid let's zoom in on this you guys now we're gonna go into what Belfagor is in just a moment but this is what we were just looking at at the top of this pyramid Belfagor. Now who is Belfagor? This is where we have to search for truth. Belfagor was a play, an Italian language opera, premiered in 1923. Does that date ring a bell? Of course it does. We just looked at Time Magazine and Mr. Luce, who started that in 1923. Now the composer was born on 1880 and 1880 and there's our 88s again but here's what's more amazing you guys Belfagor was a demon and that opera was based off of Belfagor the demon and it says that right here Odorino Resfighi's opera is called Belfagor and is partially based 
upon Machiavelli's short story. So yes, in demonology, Belphegor is a demon and one of the seven princes of hell who helps people make discoveries. This is where we get drawn in. I've been trying to tell you guys this all along. When you base things on money and fame and the desire for riches, it is the demons and the devil's workshop. He, does, he seduces people by suggesting to them ingenious inventions that will make them rich. According to some 16th century demonologists, his power is stronger in April. Bishop and witch hunter Peter Binsfield believed that Belfort's tempts by means of laziness. Okay. He is the chief demon of sin, of sin, deadly sin, known as sloth in Christian tradition. He originated as the Assyrian Baal. We hear Baal mentioned in the Bible. Okay. He is associated with lasciviousness and orgies. Worshipped as a form of a phallus. As a demon, he is described in Kabbalistic writings as a disputer. An enemy of the six Sephiroth, beauty. He grants riches, the power of discovery, and ingenious invention. He sows discord among men. To seduce them to evil through apportionment of wealth. And he carries the number 666, closed by 13 zeros and a 1. Okay. So this is all about Belphegor. And this is Belphegor in Lodi, Italy. At the top of this pyramid. Now, what does this mean? I don't know. All I know is all of this information was put before me and that everything in my life has led us up to this point. You'll also notice that in the Tempio Civico della Beate Beresine in Coronata which is the name of this artwork here, this, this, this Renaissance art, we see a dome, an octagonal dome, which is eight sides. I understand there are lots of octagonal you know, architecture and things throughout the classical world but this directly relates to what we're talking about take care and be safe you guys